Welcome to our weekly Forex market analysis call and today we are looking for at the week of February 26th to March the 2nd 2018. And just a quick disclaimer before we get started, this is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business so please be careful with your money. All right, so now let's dive in and we'll we'll start with a look at our Forex factory calendar here and we are on the 26th. Okay, so we're starting off, oh, this is not the right week. All right, so here we go, perfect. So we're starting off uh, Monday with ECB, President Draghi speaking, and also there are a lot of uh, our, you know, other bank members speaking as well. So uh, basically with these ones, it's now that the monetary policy stance is changing from central banks, we just have to be mindful of, of the comments that come out. So any comments that point towards the solid state of the economy and also point out concerns about inflation, uh, maybe overshooting or anything that suggests that the banks may raise rates, that will be considered positive for the currency. So that's what we need to pay attention to. Tuesday, we have um, CPI numbers, and then we also have um, German Buba President Weidman speaking. Again, this will have an impact, but uh, here Draghi's speech will have a bigger impact here. But we do have um, Fed Chair Powell is testifying, so this will have an impact. So we saw previously, we saw Bank of England, um, they were testifying about the monetary policies which had an impact. Now this one, uh, Fed Chair uh, Powell testifying will also have an impact on the market. So basically the market will just, um, now that they have switched the leadership role, they'll be, market will be paying attention to what the forward stance would be for the Fed because we have been seeing interest rate hikes. Are they going to continue with that or with the change of leadership, things are going to change. So that's the question that everybody will be paying attention to. And then core durable goods orders will also have an impact on the U.S. dollar Consumer confidence number, this is an important number that we do need to pay attention to and it will generally have an impact. So if it comes out positive like it's expected, then that will be positive for the US dollar. Same thing here, ANZ business confidence number for New Zealand will have an impact on a New Zealand dollar here as well. And then going into Wednesday here, not a whole lot of uh, important red data. Uh, we do have GDP, preliminary GDP numbers for the U.S., which will be important. And this one here, Chicago PMI um, numbers and pending home sales numbers. So these numbers will be important. PMI numbers are always important because they are um, leading indicators that generally lead to retail sales. So these numbers will be important. We have crude oil inventories, which will generally impact U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar as well. And private capital expenditure for Australia. We have a bunch of PMI numbers coming out on Thursday out of the Eurozone. Again, these will have an impact on the Euro. Manufacturing PMI number for British Pound, that will be important as well. So a lot of PMI numbers um, coming up. So that will be important. And then again, we have Fetcher Powell testifying. So expect volatility in the US dollar as a result of these speeches and more ISM manufacturing PMI numbers for the US that will be impactful. Okay, and then on Friday, a very, very uh, key speech will be from Prime Minister Theresa May here for a British Pound here. So Brexit um, will be um, a concern going forward or it already is a concern. So right now they're going through the negotiations and uh, British Pound has really benefited from the positive, uh, sort of the, the whole scope of the negotiations right now. Um, it seems very positive. So as a result of that, um, 
the British pound has benefited. As well, the data that has been coming out of the out of UK has been positive as well. So overall, British pound has been good. However, anytime there are political issues like this, things don't tend to go as smoothly as you know they may appear. So just keep an eye on these Brexit negotiations and the comments that come out of it. Right now, with the Prime Minister Theresa May's speech, it will be market moving. So if we hear comments about um, them reaching agreements, the two countries reaching uh, agreements in terms of trades and market and that kind of stuff, that will be positive for uh, for the especially the British pound, it will also be positive for the euro. But overall, it's the British pound that is getting impacted more by these negotiations. So that's what we'll have to pay attention to. Um, however, if there are any comments, whether they are in uh, Theresa May's speech or otherwise, about how they may not be able to reach the agreement or they may not be able to negotiate the right type of terms that will be detrimental for the British pound. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We also have construction PMI numbers. Of course, those will be important. And we have another um, uh, major thing here, Bank of England, Governor Carney speaking. So what Prime Minister Theresa May says or does in regards to Brexit, as well as what Bank of England, Governor Carney says, both of these will have an impact. So it looks like Friday will be a big day for the British pound. So if you are trading the British pound on Friday, just be mindful of that because we could see a lot of volatility um, in the pound as a result of that. And then GDP numbers for Canada, which will be important. So overall, not a ton of critical data coming out. So, uh, but we do have some central bankers. So central bankers have been in the focus right now. And what they say does have a big impact on the market. So just be mindful of that. All right. So that is our... That's our fundamentals. So now let's take a look at what we have in terms of our charts here. All right, so what we have seen with the euro, it's sideways. So last week we looked at this range bound move and this week as well, it's sideways, went to the high, um, and then went back down now. So I'm looking for it to come back towards the bottom of the range into 122.05 level or 122.00 level, and then it could bounce off. So for now, I'm going to trade this as a range bound move. So when price comes into the bottom of the range, range at 122.00, I'm looking for a bounce up. And if it goes into the top of the range, I'm looking for a bounce to the downside. So one thing we do need to keep in mind um, would be any breakouts from the range. So general behavior with the range bound market is sell at the top and buy at the bottom, right? However, if the price, let's say, comes down here and starts to do this, breaks down, then we are looking for a further move to the downside. But we do have to wait for that breakout for now it is just going sideways there's really no clear market direction we have gone into our high here so if we take a look at the left hand side um, we see that we are into this resistance area price had trouble here before it really sort of dropped further from this previous downtrend and now we are at that level again so at this point we are just in no man's land in terms of market direction for the last one to five weeks here, we haven't really broken out of this range. So now we need to see, is the price willing to break out of the range? At some point, price will break out the range of the range. We just don't know which direction it's going to break out. And as a result of that, we just have to be mindful when the price gets to these, um, these end of the, the boundary of the range. So if, if the price comes back into 12200, we have to watch out for that. So base case scenario will be the bounce back into the range once it comes to 12200 and if once it goes to uh, 12550 level then i'm looking for a bounce back into the range but i'll be watching out for any breakouts if it breaks out to the downside then i'm looking for next move to be into 12050 area so those that's what i'm looking for but for now waiting for price to come in and bounce off of 12200 so range bound for euro dollar 
in terms of the pound here, we are also um, we are also looking at. Um, Sorry, just a quick question. Can we hedge it? Um, I'm I'm not sure what like how I would hedge it. I would just wait for I would just trade the range, and once we see an indication of breaking out of the range, um, you could. So you probably what you're talking about is a straddle. So you, if you mean can you like put a sell order at the bottom, what I'd be concerned about is price spiking through it and then pulling back in. I don't typically do straddle orders because of that very reason because a lot of times what happens is price will break through because there are so many stops on the other side of it price will break through that level and then pull back in like this right price will punch through and go back into the range and the purpose of really that pin will be to grab all the orders sitting there and then kind of continue on into the opposite direction. So that's why I'm not a big, big proponent of straddling it like that. Um, I rather see a break of the, the range. And then once the price holds below the range, then we can sort of kind of continue on with that. So similar to here, where the price was just sitting below this level. And once it broke through, once this candle closed, you can just take that trade to the downside. So that's my preference, but of course there are different strategies that you can use. I prefer to just trade the range and wait for the breakout um, in either direction. So with the British pound here, this one has also gone sideways. We are in this level here. So for now it is, um, overall it is kind of pointing to the downside, but it, there is no real, um, no real sort of, uh, direction here either because we do have this uptrend and now we are seeing this uh, this pullback so it could be a pullback so we could just see one of these moves back into the bottom here into 135.80 so for now i am the week here has been really not much the candle here is very very small so we had a bullish candle here which was not engulfing and now we have a higher um, or lower high and a higher low. So it hasn't really, it's an just inside candle with a little pin. So given this situation, I'm looking for price to my bias for British pound, and this is just my bias. So just be mindful of that. We have to watch what goes on. My bias is that it breaks down a little bit. I think things have been a little bit overly positive for the British pound because everybody's optimistic that we'll get these excellent Brexit negotiations. But like I said before, these things rarely go well. And um, I mean, there was a reason there was you know, Brexit vote. So having a soft Brexit is unlikely in my opinion. However, things could change. So that's why we have to watch what the market does. So what I am looking at basically is a retest of this 13800 level and probably a squeezing like this. And my target would be 13580. So I'm looking for price to come down into this 13580 level and then potentially bounce off of this uh, uptrend line. So that's my, um, that's how I'm viewing the markets. I'm looking for further weakness in pound dollar into 135.80. However, we do have uh, Prime Minister Theresa May speaking. So on Friday, this could be impacted. So keep an eye on that. Aussie here, Aussie has been range bound here as well, but this one is looking more bearish than what we saw with the euro here. So for the last three weeks, it has held this range, but we have a lower high here. So price is coming down and we also have a double top. So a few weeks ago, we had a double top. Now price is moving lower. So as a result of that, I am looking for price to go further down. So my bias for Aussie dollar is to the downside. I'm looking for a break of this 7760-ish level here and price continuing into 7650 level and potentially even further into 7550 level. So I'm looking for price to step down a bit into the next support and resistance level here. This has been an important resistance level which has now turned into support. So we do need to wait, wait for the breakout of this level. So what I, I would be looking for is one of these and then a break to the downside. 
uh, we do have to be mindful of this 77, 60 ish level. Overall, my bias is to the downside, and the target for this will be 75.50. New Zealand dollar here, similar situation. I am looking for price to break down further. So price has tested this resistance level several times now. And only once did it try to break out to the other side and then reversed right away. And with this one here, I am looking for a further move to the downside. We have had a bearish candle close. So I'm looking for a move into 71.80 level here. That will be the first target. And then the second target would be 70.50 level. So basically waiting for price to, or looking for price to drop. So bias for New Zealand dollar would be bearish. Dollar CAD here, this has been a bit interesting. So we have seen higher lows now. So price is moving higher, but it hasn't been moving high in a very sort of a struck, in a very consistent manner. So we are seeing kind of back and forth. So it's not as, as weak as uh, the Australian dollar, for example, or New Zealand dollar. So for this one, my bias is to the upside. And again, we need to see a break. We are into this resistance level right now. So we need to see a break of this and this resistance level or this support and resistance level has kind of played out several times, but the bias is to the upside. So what I'm looking for for dollar CAD is maybe, uh, so right now we are in the middle of the candle here. So maybe back into this 125.50 level and then another move to the upside and finally a break to the top here. So my target is 12900 to the upside. So bias is to the upside, uh, but it won't be as smooth a sailing as uh, maybe Australia or Australian dollar or New Zealand dollar here. So bias is to the upside and there are commodity currencies as well. So they tend to sort of move um, at the same time. So I'm expecting price to move up higher here. It has bounced up. So we have a higher low, higher low, higher low. So and higher highs here as well. It's so looking for it to move up further. Euro Swiss franc. This one is, is still in this downward trend here. And now I am looking for price to basically, again, do another leg to the downside, make another leg to the downside for two weeks here. We have not seen it break the highs. So now we have a lower highs as there is, um, sorry, yeah, lower highs. And I'm looking for price to go down further into a 1.1320 level here. So the bias is to the downside for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc has been a little bit tougher than our euro, but overall though we are still in, so we still have this, uh, this downtrend here, right? But it could go up further. So with this one, I would be careful. We do have a bullish candle close. As a result, we could see price move either into 13300 or 13250. So I would look for, price to push up first and then do a drop. But this one will be tied to whatever happens with the, with the British pound. So I would be careful trading this one. So right now what it looks like is maybe a pullback in the, so I'm kind of seeing it as this. So looking for price to drop further, but it, like I said, it could pull back into 132.50 or 133.50. 3300 level and then drop from there. So that will be my, that will be the scenario that I'm looking for. For me, this is not the best pair to trade this week. I am just, I'm going to look for other opportunities. Probably uh, pound yen and pound dollar will be the better ones to trade instead of pound Swiss franc. Euro Swiss franc, I think, is a better one compared to this. This one here, dollar. This one is sideways. So we have seen it be in this range or stay in this range for the last few weeks now. And I am looking for price to potentially retest this level once again and do a double top type of formation. So 94.50 would be my target to the upside. But 
it is range bound at the moment. It hasn't really gone anywhere in the last few weeks. So this one may be another one where we just have to wait and see what the price does here. But for now, we did have a bullish candle close. It did not manage to close above the previous high. So it is not overly bullish. But because there is still buying going on here, we may see price push all the way up into 94.50 level and then drop. So I'm going to treat this as a range bound move. If the price goes into the high, I'm looking for a potential sell. If it goes into the bottom here, 91.80, I'm looking for a potential buy. So trading this as a range bound market. Let's take a look at the yen crosses now. With the yen here, I am... Let's see. So the yen here, we are making a lower high here. So it's not overly bullish. Very, very small weekly candle close. We have a pin on top. So I'm looking for a break to the downside for this one. Like I said, my biases, I'm not overly bullish on the British pound. I am looking for uh, for pound to face more hurdles as the whole talks, negotiation talks continue. So for me, I'm looking for further breakdown of this. My target would be 143.20 level. So I do want to see a break of this level of the 148.20 ish level and then a continued move to the downside. So we do need to make sure that the price holds below this pin here or maybe 148.00 level. And then I'm looking for a break to the downside. So bias is to the downside for pound yen. Euro yen here, the bias is also to the downside. And the next target. So the next target I'm looking at is 128.50 here. So this is we have last. Uh, this is what we have last three weeks. We have seen a downwards move. We have a bearish pin bar here for the weekly candle close. We are into support here, though. This resistance turning into support. So we do need to see a break of 131.00. But my bias is to the downside. I'm looking for price to go into 128.50 level. So looking for um, euro yen to drop a bit. This one here, Aussie. Yen, we were bearish and it has come into this 83.30 level. So the buy still is to the downside, but as we can see, price is struggling at that level. And this is the where the previous support resistance is coming from. Price had struggled in this area before, but the bias is still to the downside. I'm looking for a retest of this 83.30 level and then looking for 82.50 level to the downside. So looking for price to drop further overall, the bias still remains to the downside here. But do keep in mind, we are kind of coming into these levels that are almost to the bottom here. And also just to mention with Japanese yen strengthening so much, there will be additional pressure or added pressure on um, on Bank of Japan to react. So sorry, looking at the weekly here, we do have a bearish pin bar. So I'm looking for price to go into 82.50 and potentially even lower into 81.80 level. So there will be additional pressure or added pressure on Bank of Japan to intervene. So they have said that they're not likely, they're not going to intervene in the markets, but um, the history that Bank of Japan has is of intervention. So what could happen is, if the bank, bank of Japan is not very comfortable with the strength of their currency, because if the currency is expensive, the exports will drop and they don't want that. Japan is such a big exporting country that it would have a material impact. The strength of the currency has a material impact on their economy. So as a result of that, Bank of Japan does not want the currency to be high. And uh, before they would just go intervene in the market before really letting anybody know. However, there has been a lot of pressure on them to not do that. Everybody's criticized them because it creates sudden moves in the market that nobody really likes or cares, of, uh, cares about. So as a result of that, they have sort of stayed their hand in terms of intervention. 
but the more expensive Japanese yen gets, more we see drops and everything else against the Japanese yen, the higher the likelihood of Bank of Japan intervention. So generally what we see is Bank of Japan will just come and sell a whole bunch of yen um, and it will create this move to the upside in all the yen crosses. So just be, just be mindful of that because as the further it drops, all the yen crosses drop, the more the likelihood of Bank of Japan intervening in the market. All right, so the last one here is uh, dollar yen. Dollar yen, we are still staying below this previous support level and now turning into resistance. So I'm looking for price to drop further and the target will be about 104.50 level right into this one here. Um, in this case, we could see a push up into this to retest this support and resistance level again, 107.80 level, and then looking for price to test 105.50 and then 104.50 after that. So bias is to the downside for dollar yen as well. All right, any other questions or any other, anything else you want me to look at? Um, first depends uh, when to enter the trade. I usually, um, so I look at my weekly analysis at the beginning of the week, just to sort of get a, get a lay of the land and get an idea of what I'm looking at for the week to come. And then based on how things play out during the week, because the news may come out and things may change. Market is dynamic. So I look at the daily I do the daily market analysis and I look at the daily candlesticks and that's when I would start looking at um, where to take the trades from. But when I actually place the trade, I am looking at a lower down, uh, lower time frame to go into the position, but uh, the levels are coming from the higher time frame levels. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Anything else? Um, my what indicator do i recommend i personally don't tend to use too many indicators what i do use are pivot points so these are pivot point levels and um, these green are pivot points and r1 r2 and s1 s2 levels so this is one of the indicators that i do like to use and then volume is another one um, that i tend to look at so pivot point and volume i would say will be the two that i personally prefer All right, so I don't see any other questions. All right, so that's all I have. Um, if you, so we were just talking about daily market analysis. If you guys are interested in joining me for, uh, for the daily market analysis, that's part of the trade room. Um, option that I have. So if some, if you want to join me in the trade room, there is a private Skype group where I share my trade ideas and analysis. I also, when I take live trades, I send out the alert. So I normally put in where I'm entering the trade, uh, the entry level, my stop loss level, my take profit target. And I also manage the trade. So when I move my stops and the stuff like that, so I send all of that information out. Um, I also, uh, we also do daily market analysis. So we have a similar call every night at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's recorded. So if you're not able to make it, you can always, um, you know, get the call or get the recording of the call. And if you join the trade room, you will also, you'll be able to, based on the daily market analysis call, you'll be, will, you'll get the levels that I'm looking to take trades from. So you can choose to take the entries that I'm taking, or if you wanted to take additional trades, we go through all the different crosses. So you will have levels for all those crosses to trade from. You also get my pivot point indicator, which is um, one I, that I do reference in the trade room. So you can join this on a monthly basis and the cost for that would be $97 a month. And you can go to tradingwithvenus.com forward slash trading dash signals for that. Or if you wanted a better price point, I do offer uh, semi-yearly and yearly options as well. And these are the different links you can go to to access those. All right, so that's all I have. Um, I will 
call it a wrap now. So you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend and I will see you next time.